This is one of the best additions I've ever made to my home lab. A, because it solves a problem I've been putting off for quite some time, and B, because it was actually made by a fellow YouTuber, Jeff, over at Craft Computing. Now, because of that, I'm sure a lot of you have already seen this, but this is the Axe Effect temperature sensor from, well, Craft Computing. And it's actually a really simple device. It's just a Wi-Fi temperature sensor that you can monitor using SNMP. Today, I thought I'd just talk about it for a bit and my brief experience with it, as well as how I'm now using it to monitor temperatures in my network server closet using Home Assistant and Prometheus and Grafana. Now this is in the beta stage, which is why it's in this 3D printed enclosure. And if you open up the enclosure, you'll actually just find a Raspberry Pi Pico, which is soldered to a custom PCB that contains the thermal probe. According to Jeff and his website, the final version won't be 3D printed, it'll be injection molded or using some other manufacturing process. And while it still will use the RP2040 microcontroller, it won't be a Raspberry Pi Pico, it'll actually be a fully custom PCB. But even in the beta enclosure, it's a really helpful design with hole spacing that lets you rack mount this either horizontally or vertically, or just screw it into a wall or whatever else. It also has a micro USB connector, but I believe on the final version that'll be USB-C and possibly even a barrel jack. While the green's cool and all, I was kind of hoping to 3D print my own enclosure that maybe even had a like polycarbonate like, transparent lid, but when I tried to reach out to Jeff to get a hold of the models, he, he kind of just ghosted me, so I guess I might have to start calling him other Jeff. I'm kidding, I'm sure he's busy, and I guess I'll just stick with the craft computing green enclosure for now. Now I am sure many of you are already thinking, well, couldn't I just make this myself? And absolutely, you definitely could. You could go grab some ESP microcontroller or the Raspberry Pi Pico, and then get a thermal probe and write some code and flash it to it and so on and so on. And sometimes it may just not be worth it to spend that much time trying to build your own. In fact, I just dug this ESP board and thermal probe out of storage because I bought this quite a while back with the intention of essentially making exactly this, and well, clearly I never got around to it. So being able to go out and buy something that's even just as dead simple as this is and just have it work can be really useful, and honestly, it seems like there's sort of a gap in the market that this looks to fill. But that's enough talking about it, let's go ahead and plug this thing in so I can show you how to set it up and how I set it up with Home Assistant and Prometheus. Like I said, this has a micro USB connection for power, but this is also how you configure it using a serial connection. So I'm gonna plug this into my computer really quick. And then here in device manager, there's this USB serial device that popped up, which is at COM3. So I'm gonna hop over into PuTTY and we'll go to serial COM3 and then a baud rate of 115200. And we should be able to hit open and then enter. And there we go. Here we can hit I for info or C for config or you, know, you can read. So I'm gonna hit I really quick. So here you can see the temperature, which is a little bit higher than I would have imagined. The, the lights in here do make it pretty warm and I was also holding it for a while. So I imagine that will start going down here in a bit now that it's on. But here you can see that I already have it set up on my SSID that I'll have blurred out. And you can see the rest of the information, but I'm gonna go ahead and factory reset this and show you how I got it set up from scratch. So we'll hit Q. And then we hit F. Okay, so now we're back. If I go to info, you can see we don't have any Wi-Fi SSID, no IP address or anything. So I'm gonna hit Q and then C for config. And here we can start setting things up. So for network name, I'm gonna hit N and I'm going to change this to my SSID that I'm going to keep nice and blurred out. Then for password, I'll type in my password. Hostname, I'm just gonna leave this as Axe Effect for now at least. And now for use DHCP, I noticed when I hit U, it doesn't really do anything, it seems. I'm not exactly sure how I got this to switch. I think last time after I first set it up with an SSID and got it to connect to the network, then I could configure the IP address and everything. So we'll just put everything else in, reset it, and then I think I can set up the network from there. For now, I'm just gonna leave the community as public, although I'll probably change that in the future. And then under location, I'm actually just going to change it to network closet. And then we can hit R to write config and reset the device. And we'll restart PuTTY again, hit enter. And now if we hit info, I can see that my SSID is there. I'm getting an IP address from DHCP, which I want to change. And then everything else looks good. So I'm going to go back to the main menu and then config again. And here I'm gonna hit Hmm. Darn. Okay, so I don't know what I did just now. I just, I pressed U for DHCP, nothing changed. I wonder if it just needed to refresh. 
No. Okay, so I don't know what I did. <laughs> I just pressed a combination of escape and some other stuff, and eventually this DHCP switched to no. So I'm going to hit I, and I'm going to put in an IP address here. And we'll do a net mask of 255.255.255.0. And then a gateway. And then community. I don't know why that went to blank. We'll hit public. And I think that's all correct. We'll hit write config. And then now in info, we have the correct IP address set. So we're on the network. We got everything set up. I did notice this kind of bug here where port would now switch to zero on the SNMP settings instead of 161. I'm not really sure what that's all about because it still uses port 161. So I'm not sure if this is zero is because it's showing like a default value or something. Under SNMP config, there's no port option, but it does seem like this is working on port 161. But this isn't very helpful unless we have something to actually monitor it. So let's talk about that. So first off in Home Assistant, you can see I have this network closet sensor here, which is a little bit funky because it's been unplugged and moved around for a bit, but you can see the temperature in uh, American units, although it does report it in degrees Celsius, but uh, my Home Assistant is set up to use Fahrenheit, so it shows it in Fahrenheit even though it's reported in Celsius. Yeah, so don't, don't come get mad at me in the YouTube comments for not using Celsius. To get this working, I had to just add a sensor in the Home Assistant configuration.yaml file. So if I go to nano, Home Assistant slash configuration dot YAML. And then scroll all the way down here to the bottom. I have this sensor using platform SNMP name axe effect. And then this base OID I'll come back to. Version is 2C and that's because the beta version of the axe effect supports SNMP version one and version 2C. I also set up this value template, thanks to the help of ChatGPT, which takes the value, converts it to an integer, divides it by 100, because this is normally reported as an integer with no decimal place, so this divides it by 100 to, so it doesn't show 2,000 something degrees Celsius, it's 20 whatever. That's a terrible way of explaining that, sorry. Then converts it to a float and rounds to whatever. ChatGPT helped me come up with that, but that converts it to the correct like formatting. And then it's reporting in degrees Celsius, community public, except errors true, which this is, I think, just so that if Home Assistant starts up and the sensor was offline, it would still add the sensor and initialize it without having any issues that way. Now, this base OID was a little bit tricky to figure out, and that's partly because I, I'm a complete beginner when it comes to SNMP, and it's a little bit complicated, um, but also probably because there's not a lot of documentation for this thing just yet. In Jeff's video, he mentioned they're using a common MIB, which I believe is basically just a way to interpret the SNMP output and know what is what, I guess. I, once again, complete beginner when it comes to SNMP. But I looked up the MIB that he showed they're using, which is this entity sensor MIB. And if you go down to sensor value, which has this OID, that's the OID that I put here. I actually also used this SNMP tester that I downloaded uh, to let me type in what I believe is the base OID for that entity sensor. And so I could hit walk and then give it the IP address and port and hit start. And then it would come back with these results, which this right here, this 2433, that's the integer that represents the 24.33 degrees Celsius. So it took a little bit of tinkering for me to kind of figure all of that out, but that's how I figured it out. And that's how I got it set up and working in Home Assistant. Now, I also got this set up working with Prometheus and Grafana, which I really haven't done any good metric reporting and visualization for my home lab setup, partly because I don't have a ton of stuff running, but I also just haven't gotten around to doing it. But getting the Axe Effect sensor kind of inspired me to step up my game a bit when it comes to metrics and reporting and logging and all of that stuff. So I set up Prometheus and Grafana, and I eventually managed to get the Axe Effect sensor working, uh, reporting to Prometheus and then Grafana is what's used to display that in a nice pretty way. So here in Grafana you can see I have this, uh, I only have two dashboards because I've just started setting some of this stuff up. So I do have a dashboard for my Proxmox server, uh, which really isn't doing a whole lot. And then I have this other one that I made for the network closet sensor. And if I go to the range, let's do like last three hours, you can see it here and it's kind of fluctuated. It's sitting right on top of the like vent on the top of my computer case, so I guess that's kind of why it's a bit warm right now. But I can go back to like the last six hours and you can see this is actually when it was in my closet and then I moved it here into my office before I turned the lights on and then here's now. I'm not going to go into any sort of deep dive into Grafana and Prometheus because that would be a much longer video that frankly I'm not qualified to make. 
but essentially Grafana is just pulling metrics from Prometheus, which is what's actually in charge of gathering those metrics and storing them. So over in Prometheus, I can go to my targets and we see we have this job for SNMP, which is pulling from this endpoint on localhost port 9116. This is actually the SNMP exporter because, because Prometheus by itself can't just grab SNMP data. It has to take in specifically Prometheus like reporting data. Once again, I'm a bit new to all of this, but you do need this SNMP exporter, which actually takes in that SNMP data and then converts that into data that Prometheus can ingest or, or whatever. So that's why I'm also running this SNMP exporter on the same LXE container that Prometheus is running on. And I can actually hop over into that LXE container really quick. And if we open up the prometheus.yaml, you can see my very basic configuration here. And down here, I have this job name SNMP. And there's this target here, which is the 192.168.10.55, which is the actual sensor. But it's not grabbing data directly from that. It's grabbing data from this SNMP exporter, which that's actually at this local host port 9116. And this part of it was actually really easy to set up. Just getting data from that SNMP exporter was pretty easy. What was difficult was actually getting the SNMP exporter running. Also, this is definitely not sort of the final version of this. This was just what I was able to tinker around with and get working. I actually don't even have a service set up yet for the SNMP exporter. So if this LXE container resets, I'd have to restart it up again manually. But to get this working, I just followed the instructions on how to get the SNMP exporter working. But I needed a module that would actually recognize the entity sensor MIB. Really, this is probably not the best way to do this. I'm definitely not using the correct terminology, I'm sure. But I'm going to do my best to explain what I did so that if you're trying to do the same thing, it might help you a little bit. So essentially, I have this snmp.yaml here that has the information for the OIDs for the entity sensor and basically tells this snmp exporter what to get and then what to export to Prometheus. But to set this up, I had to generate this file, which there is an SNMP generator that you can make and then use to generate this SNMP.yaml file. But that was kind of a pain, partly because the documentation wasn't that great. For example, they don't even mention that you need the Go language compiler to compile it, which I'm a bit dumb and it took me a while to figure that out. But I was able to make it work, especially with some help from an issue I found on the SNMP exporter GitHub. I was able to copy some of this and eventually generate my own snmp.yaml file, which has this module for entity physical sensors. So back in the prometheus.yaml, you can see that's where this module entity physical sensors comes from. And that's finally how I was able to actually get this working in Prometheus, which you can see here in Prometheus under metrics explorer, I can go to this sensor value, execute, and we can see this value here at 24.12 degrees Celsius. So it was a little bit of a pain to set up, partly because SNMP is a little bit complicated and I'm completely new to it. But now that it is set up, I can easily see the temperature of my home lab, either through Home Assistant or through Grafana. And I can even set up alerts from Prometheus or Grafana that way if it gets too hot in there, I can well, probably ignore it, but it's still pretty cool. I'm also sure that I did this in a more complex way than what I needed to. So if you think you know better, make sure and comment it down below. So it was a bit of work for me at least to get this set up just because I'm pretty new to SNMP, but I'm pretty happy with the Axe Effect sensor. I'm really excited to see what comes in the final version. It looks like there's going to be a PoE version, which I'm pretty excited about because I don't like just having a random USB cable plugged into something. Although nothing in my little rack is that tidy to be fair. And it also looks like in the final version, you'll have access to not only the temperature data, but also humidity and pressure. Really, other than maybe just a few little bug fixes in the config, the only thing I'd really like to see is maybe just a few different options for protocols or exporters. Like for example, for me, it would have really helped out if this thing could just export to Prometheus natively. I also think it could be cool to include something like MQTT for maybe someone who doesn't have a ton of networking gear and doesn't really need something like Prometheus, but maybe just wants to monitor some things in Home Assistant or in some other IoT setup of sorts. I would also love to see a PCB only version where you could potentially download the models for the case and print your own in whatever color you want, and maybe even have some community made versions of specific custom enclosures. I think that could be really cool. With all that being said though, I really like this little guy. It's dead simple, but it solves a very real problem at a reasonable price, and I'm really excited to see the final version. 
It's also really cool just to see this product coming from Jeff over at Craft Computing because he has been one of my favorite YouTubers for quite a few years now. I really hope you guys enjoyed this quick look at the Axe Effect, and if you're interested, make sure to go to craftcomputing.com. I'll have that link down in the description. I think Jeff's already sold like 300 of these beta units, so I really don't know how many more will be available, so I'm sorry if they aren't available, but you can just look forward to the final release, which I think is towards the end of this year. I know this video was probably a bit short compared to my normal videos, but that's partly because I just wanted to take a look at this, and also because I've been working on a somewhat larger project, which should be out next week, so stay tuned for that. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, stay curious, and I really can't wait to see you in the next one.